Hello, hi, hola, handling greeting. Welcome. Today, let's look at software, VP Planet Generator, something that requires very little understanding that can help you randomize the creation of planets. It comes with four friends here, Crater Generator, Stars Generator, Clouds, and another planet generator. The top option, the Mogetson Planet Generator, developed in the early 21st century, or at least finished in the early 21st century. Let's go and see what exactly this thing can do. It will probably come in handy if you want to create fake school maps for alien planets, and you can change the colors in different ways, and you can also change the size. Interesting to note, the sizes are not even numbers, but odd numbers. I suspect that's because, for some reason, it's handy to have a pixel running down the middle. With an even number, you of course would not have a pixel running down the middle. The different settings control some of the obvious things. The magnification of the map that we have right now of 5 will zoom into dead center. So this is a 5x magnification. I haven't found an upper limit to this thing, so here's a 150 magnification zooming right into that center. This center is almost unrecognizable unless you kind of kind of follow along here. Where do you suppose that might be? I suppose it could be, no, I don't know. I've, uh, no, I guess it would be this little thing right here. It'd be neat to animate this, but uh, that would take an awful lot of work. <laughs> and so these colors you can see are fractal generated and you can increase some of the fractal generation by clicking wrinkly colors so we do the same thing with wrinkly colors and this is what happens this is great for a fast satellite down shot of terrain or whatever if you create something that you like but you wanted to save this one and back you're out of luck you can only save the most recent render, and the Save button is over here on the Control Menu window. So if I click Save, it saves only this one. You'll notice that it's not giving me an option to uh, choose which of these to save. So it's important that as you work, you sort of keep track where you are in your own workflow. And another thing that you could do is the whole day-night one is the base man magnification. The day-night thing that uh, you see at NASA is uh, something you can enable here and it has a bit of a bump map and the reason it has a bit of a bump map to itself is because the colors are not only this which is a default color but a grayscale which you can use in a 3D application and wrap in a cylindrical way around a sphere or rounded cube and get the actual bumps and then color it yourself. And that's what I prefer to do. You probably keep seeing this background pop up. And that was something that I enjoyed playing with. But that doesn't help you with the, uh, with the settings here. So why don't we talk about some of the settings. You could do a grid, which is in, um, in uh, factors of 5. So 5, 10, 15, of course. And this grid, if you're creating a map for a group that's playing on a planet, uh, if you're doing one of the sci-fi games, or you zoom in and you feel like having your team up close and personal, these fives are, I think they're five degrees. Yes, these are degrees, so you could cut your grid up by degrees, but uh, the degrees only work going across. You know they don't work up and down because this is a uh, sphere that's sort of wrapped around. There's the whole um, distortion of maps, and are they really accurately representing Greenland and Iceland compared to the size of the United States, etc.? And uh, are our countries closer to the poles really as big as they appear? So perhaps this would be something that uh, a lot of players would perhaps more readily appreciate. An equator and then your your tropics of the upper limits of your of your path of your sun travel. Is that what it is? So the limitations are uh, intriguing on this but they're not game stoppers. I think they're not show stoppers. I've just woken up. Sorry for the uh, gravelly voice. You could enable the grid and then really just use the outlines of whatever it is that this has decided is the ocean and the land. The grid doesn't show up. Here the grid shows up with outlines and there's a few other options like that. You could just skip all of that and choose white as the, uh, 
as the render so it won't color anything and now you get the outline with the grid the render options the color maps are are many 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 and if you're one of the people who enjoys putting uh, paper and scissors to good use a uh, colored map projection map projection that is icosahedral will give you one of those things you can cut out and create the actual you know 20 sided ball that you can dangle from the ceiling map projections are kind of important and this has a lot to do with how distorted are the poles some of these map projections require squares for the render and some require two to one rectangles I'm no expert on what is required for which, but I do know that when you choose square, I do know that when you choose square, you have to not have a square. And this is the kind of map where the poles are widely distorted across the top and across the bottom. And then the equator is basically a one to one pixel ratio. So you can also see that your colors RGB are represented beneath the mouse and that's in the bottom left of this window. If you wanted to create your own colors, there is a way to edit the color map over here. If you wanted the water to recede, what you would do is change the land altitude. By changing the land altitude, you can adjust the separation between land and sea. I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? So here we have this giant lake shrinking. And then if we go into negative territory, sort of prehistory, that same lake now opens up and spills into the oceans. When you close this menu window, everything closes. I found this doesn't install its own start menu option in Windows. So I always have to begin typing in VP when I do a search and VP Planet Generator is then revealed and comes up immediately. When you close and open it, it also resets all of its settings to, uh, to these defaults. I enjoy using this thing. And then uh, I, what I use it for is a grayscale and I take this grayscale into a 3D software and create a, a 3D sphere out of it. If you wanted to use this as black and white and then make a large render of it for some reason, you would probably want to have less black because you can tell by the RGB values in the bottom left of this window, they're all zero. It's just capped at zero, which is really useless and doesn't contain any usable information for terrain. One number to change is this 0.035 lowering the contribution of distance to the variation will improve areas like that black, you know, soulless area, the cemeteries down here in the bottom hemisphere. Now you can see that they are uh, more fully flavored with tones of gray. And that translates to other parts of this as well. When we come out of gray and we go back into the default coloring, it now looks like this. Oh, that's a lot of water. I don't know if this is going to show up so well because of all that water, but I'll put this back up to 035. Click, click, click. <laughs> Sorry if that's really loud. And uh, so there is that difference when it's colored. This was the 019. This is the 035. So the contribution is more texture in the highlands, but also uh, when you, you know, more texture in the lowlands when you lower that number. So for me, because I use uh, the 3D software, I need more texture in the lowlands. If you were just using the color straight out of this, you'd want more texture in the highlands above the water, not really caring that the water is black. Okay, I mean, the, you know, that the, uh, the bump map is black down low. And the altitude contribution to variation is roughly along the same lines. So that's changing the water altitude here by changing the land altitude. 
making the uh, the zero values turn into other values and changing the width and height really depends what kind of map projection you have. It's cool. If you click this button, the height field, you're going to basically not get anything but like a spreadsheet of numbers and values. It's not a picture. And a latitude color adjustment. I think we should quickly look at this. It is what people would expect where the northern and southern poles become snowy and icy. More adjustment equals more snow and more ice until finally you just have basically like this crazy ice age. And uh, I don't find that very compelling whatsoever. Mars is a good color map. It takes what we knew of Mars in the last century and uh, uses those colors. These days we know much more about the colors of Mars than we did when this was created. Its companion programs were created in 1999 and this one was created in 1989 touched up in 1991 to sort of stay with the times. So don't ask for too much out of things like this. Here's that same Mars render, but without any uh, latitude or what was it? Latitude? <laughs> without, without any latitude color adjustment, here's that same. So uh, the ice caps on Mars are, uh, are, are iffy. Grayscale and then one click on the randomize button will take you sailing into a completely different map. Absolutely different. So in your workflow, you may be well advised to make the file name an important part of your clipboard. That's control C so that you can always go back to these random seeds to make sure that uh, if the next one is not as good as the one you did have, you could go back to it. This one happens to be pretty sweet. And also I like to use these as file names so that if I control C this one and then save the most recent render that came up, I like to use this as the file name and then confirm that PNG. These PNGs, uh, I haven't quite got confirmation on it. I think they're 8-bit PNGs. Um, this was the 1990s that this that this happened, or at least year 2000. But they do uh, translate well into the 16-bit, which is where I continue to use them somewhere else. Whenever you can use 16-bit black and white, do it, folks. So here's a wrinkly render of the same. And uh, I've found also, let me just pare this down. <clears throat> that extra octave of fractal or whatever it's called, you can see clearly here. I've also found that this is a good processor test. If you take this thing and you just decide, you know what, I love it. I'm adding nines and I'm adding, uh, what was that? Yeah, and I'm adding a nine and I'm gonna hit render. You will get something. I enjoy making these random planets because I have started enjoying writing a little bit of hard and soft science fiction with different characters. And it's something that I'm, uh, beginning to illustrate on my own and sometimes the illustrations move stories forward or the stories help to inspire illustrations. It's something that I hope some of you would uh, uh, follow me along with and as I come up with new ways to create new inspirations that are graphic I'll be sharing that on YouTube and also at Patreon. All these details here on the render are uh, stretched out. And here's black because I didn't adjust the altitude contribution to variation. But uh, that's an awful lot of very pretty, attractive, abstract looking fractal. And just all by itself, something this large could uh, uh, be quite an asset to whatever the project you're doing. This is grunge for some of your 2D applications. This doesn't always have to be a planet. There are different ways that you can warp this, manipulate this. I thought VP Planet Generator would be something that a lot of people uh, would be curious to use and maybe have never heard of. 
It overwrites just as easy as anything else overwrites. The image gets saved, and so that big image took as long as, uh, as, as well, I, I edited it so you wouldn't have to wait for the whole thing. Anyway, that is a look at software. If you enjoyed this and you like the idea of creating some hard or soft science fiction fantasy and some of the ideas that go along with it, join me. Subscribe to the channel. I'm over 700, which is fantastic. It makes me feel so good. I want to hit 1,000 as fast as possible uh, just because that would also make me feel so good to know that I have your support and that I do things you find interesting, at least a little bit. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.